Hey everybody, I'm Niall Maher and in this video we're going to talk about 5 tricks you can do with NPM to make you a little bit more productive. Now let's jump in. I'm going to keep away from the obvious NPM tips like shortcuts for keys and show you things that I actually think you might not know. And if you found it helped, make sure you like and subscribe so I will make more stuff like this. So this project that I'm working in is a project I made a few years ago. Um, it has, I think, React isn't even on version 1 here in it. So it's definitely going to have a lot of uh, fun things and quirks inside it. So I thought it'd be a fun one to actually check out with some of these tips. So the first thing usually when you jump into a project is you probably want to check out what scripts are inside your package.json. So there's a couple of ways we can do that. And the very first, uh, I suppose, obvious way to do it is to jump into your package.json and run down and look for your scripts. And you can see here we have start test and test watch. But I would like to be a little bit fancier with this and I'm going to open up my terminal here and we can actually check out all the available scripts by saying npm run and you can see here we get the lifecycle scripts included in react YouTube player are start and it gives us what the command is and test which is this command here and we also get uh, the test watch command. So I think this is a pretty clean way of doing it and I think the only other way really would be to kind of you know cat package dot json but even then you're gonna just basically be reading through the text so I really like that uh, npm run command. So that's tip number one and for tip number two we're gonna do something similar. Uh, we're going to try and look for things that we'd normally have to manually look for. And so this one is going to be looking for installed packages. So instead of jumping into our package.json or checking our node modules to see what's installed, we can actually just uh, do a nice little command of npm list. And that lists out all of our dependencies, but you can see here it also lists out our dependencies dependencies, which is a, a little bit cluttered because we might not really care about what our uh, dependencies have as dependencies. So to limit that, we can actually go npm list and we can go minus minus depth and equals to zero to make sure the search is only for the first level. And cool, now we get a flat look at all of the packages. So that's pretty useful again for just seeing what packages you have available to you. And that is tip number two. So for tip number three, we are going to open the packages links without actually going and looking online for them. So this is something that I find really powerful. Say if I look at something in here that I haven't used in a while, like jQuery, um, let's have a look at how we would open the home page for the uh, jQuery. So we can say npm home and then we can give it the package name, so jQuery. And what that will do is actually open up in our browser the home page for that package. So that is pretty cool. So if you're trying to remember how to use something that's in there, you can actually just open it up without having to go and Googling and everything else. It will bring you directly to the package linked. And you can also do uh, something very similar for actually getting the repo for it. And you can just say npm repo jQuery. And that should bring you to the repo for jQuery then. So it's waiting for GitHub. There we go. So um, yeah, that's pretty useful for actually finding the docs and things you need to get up and running with something, especially if you're looking after um, some legacy code bases and things like that, and you might not be sure of all the bits and pieces that go together in it. So that's tip number three. The next tip is getting versions of a package. So 
let's have a look at something like React here. So in my packages here, I actually have a very old version of React. I'm using React 0.14.9. If anyone's been using React, they'll know that that's super old because we're on 16 point something, I think, at the moment. But let's see we, what we want to get the current version. And let's say we want to get the current version, we could say npm v react version. And that should give us the current version of React. So that's 16.13.1. So we're a little bit outdated. And uh, if we wanted to see if there was any alpha releases or if there was any other releases we could be interested in, we can actually plural uh, make this plural and just add an S onto that and say npm v react versions. And now we get a list of all of the available versions that are there. So that can be good if you're looking to see if there's an alpha release out for something, or if you're interested in seeing if you can bump it up by a minor version or something like that. So that's a pretty cool uh, trick as well. And so that's your tip number four. And now for tip number five, we're going to check for outdated dependencies. So this, as you can imagine, is probably going to have a lot of outdated dependencies because I have so uh, uh, so such old packages in it. So how I could check to see what's outdated is I can run very nicely named outdated, npm outdated. And we get a nice little table here showing us in red if they're bad or uh, if they have security errors, I think. I think it's yellow if it's only a minor warning for them. Um, so you can tell things are pretty bad for my project here. And what we have is this table called current and wanted. And if you, your current and wanted don't match, what you can actually do is you can say npm upgrade. And it's not going to do anything for me because they all match. But you could get your wanted list very easily by hitting npm upgrade and that will give you the wanted packages here. But because this is so out of date, it didn't probably have the feature at the time. So it's not gonna let me really change this without breaking things. So I'm not going to bother there. I think even if I run it, it will probably just do nothing. Um, it'll probably hang. No, yeah, just does nothing. I think we still have the same outdated packages as before yeah st still the same things but that's pretty useful to know like how outdated things are and you know the similar kind of uh, way of doing these things is kind of running your npm audit so that will do your security audit or let's see neither npm shrink rack oh it's because i never probably installed things yet npm install and then i will do a uh, an npm audit on this and i didn't really throw this in as a tip i wanted to show you outdated because we usually get prompted about this npm audit and the npm audit gives us a whole different section showing us all the security vulnerabilities this one these are two packages that require manual uh, reviews and then these are things that we could do to just upgrade the dependencies but they potentially breaking changes and if you wanted to force those breaking changes you can actually uh, do it with the force command as well so what is it the commands there we can say npm audit fix okay so npm audit fix and it won't do anything for me here because there's too much or they're too late so what i'd have to do is actually pass the force command but if i do that it will break everything because these are all going to jump up about three or four different versions at least since this project's maybe four years old um so i'm not going to do that because i'd probably like to play with this project afterwards and so for the final tip or kind of the bonus tip, um, this is something I like in uh, Visual Studio Code. And that's actually 
we have a little tab that a lot of people kind of forget about down here that lets us run uh, scripts. And we can actually just open up our package.json and uh, we can actually just run our commands directly from here. So I could just say start and I wonder will this work? Oh, it compiled successfully. Excellent. Um, yeah, so you can actually just run your command straight from here as well, which is very useful to just have things running for uh, an easy interface so you don't have to tell people how to run commands. If you have your team running with this, it's super smooth. So I hope you found some of those tips helpful. And if you did, make sure you like and subscribe. And until next time, happy coding.